For this space camp adventure, we head to Bainai Brychinog, the pure wilderness which is the Brecon Beacons National Park. The peaceful and remote mountains, hills and valleys carved out by the passing of ancient ice ages. Far-reaching moorlands softened by the harshest rhythms of weather, presenting landscapes that appear time has forgotten. Where we hike deep into the emptiness to locate the wreckage of wartime aviation crash sites. and witness the power and grandeur of the highest single drop waterfall in the Brecon Beacons. Join us on this most wild of base camping adventures. For this trip, we locate ourselves at the foot of Coombe Hafas, on the western flank of the National Park. Hitching up at the touring park of the National Show Caves of Wales, which is flanked by high peaks and drenched in outstanding natural beauty. All touring pitches are hard standing and fully serviced. With the majority enjoying Afon Tau or the Quiet River as a personal back garden. The Show Caves uses the Quiet River to produce renewable electricity and was one of the first tourist attractions in the UK to be energy self sufficient. The on site facilities block, which is also powered by renewable electricity, offers 16 private toilet and shower cubicles. Upon arrival to the site, there is no check-in process. Guests simply pitch up and a warden calls to collect payment during the evening. Access to my pitch was on a steep incline, so I decided to use the motor mover rather than risk a burnt out clutch from reversing up the hill. For this adventure, I am using the Dometic Portico Air 180, a straightforward, effective overhead door protection for inclement weather. Ideal for when strong winds are on the forecast. The rigid airframe design and standard CADA connection ensures a quick and easy setup, perfect for the solo tourer. Remembering to put a twist in the storm straps to minimise vibrations. Opposite the touring park is Craigynos Country Park. The 40 acre park, which forms part of the historic Victorian castle grounds, makes for the perfect leg stretch following a long drive and setup.
I've tired the poor dog out already and we haven't even got started yet. Look at the view out the window there. Those mountains over there have got my name written all over them. We'll have to wait till tomorrow. Okay, so the plan for this evening, we're gonna get some scran on shortly. Uh, my wife has cooked me up a portion of her vegetable chili. Just put it in the fridge here. There you go, it's in that tub there. So I'm gonna heat that up. And I use that as a base for a pasta. Got plenty of pasta in the cupboard there. So we'll get some food on and then we'll get a film on and then we're gonna to go to bed really early tonight so that we are as fighting fit as possible for tomorrow's hiking. I just cannot wait to get out tomorrow. It's the first night, just getting ready for bed. Got the gentle pitter patter of the rain on the caravan. I love going to bed when it's raining in the base camp. See what the dog's doing. She's gone for a steal of my sleeping bag as per usual. But gone for the foot of the sleeping bag this time. Interesting. So the plan for today, I've got numerous walks planned, a couple planned directly from the campsite. This one here is directly from the campsite up the mountain just behind us here to a Wellington bomber crash location. I'm really excited to do that one, but I'm going to wait till tomorrow because the visibility tomorrow is better. Today's a bit murky and a bit claggy. So instead, I'm going to do the out and return from the campsite to Henrith Falls, which is a very famous waterfall here in Bainai Brachinog. So if I just open the map, so there's the route, the red line, there's the blue, that blue dot's our pitch, and then the red line's the route, going up into the mountain and then across to the waterfall. Now it's a nine mile out and return. The geology of Wales has given the country massive deposits of coal and valuable minerals, which led to the construction of a number of railways in Wales. Our route across the moors follows the abandoned Neath to Brecon line, opened in 1867 and closed to all traffic in 1962. Our route across the Swansea Valley passes through a fascinating area, full of the remains of Welsh industrial past. Now, difficult to imagine the area as a major quickline and brick production centre. We continue on through an arduous landscape, whose beauty is hidden within the barren uplands. Our journey along the line began at the Craigynos railway station. Abandoned long ago, the thick fog presenting a ghostly scene as the station still awaits the last train which was to never arrive.
Tucked away on the western edge of the Brecon Beacons is Scud Henrith, or Henrith Falls, an impressive and graceful waterfall with a drop of over 90 feet. Located in a deep wooded gorge which is accessible only via steep but well-maintained footpath, winding through a native woodland of oak and ash, crossing a footbridge over Nantz Lech. Visitors can navigate a slippery rocky path around the plunge pool into a large alcove behind the waterfall. A truly magical experience. So we're back from our hike to that waterfall. The dog is done and dusted. Won't get much out of here for the rest of tonight. What a fabulous waterfall that was. Probably the best waterfall I've ever personally been to, being that you could um, walk behind it. It was an amazing, beautiful waterfall. The hike across the moors to get to it, though, was rather intense, it has to be said, with that 50 metre visibility at best. Cracking water, though. So the plan now, I've got my hot water on that's ready and we're we'll diving in the shower. Oh, just one quick thing on the electrics. We're on a 10 amp uh, pitch here. So on the limit, I've set the limit to 10 amps so that I don't accidentally trip the electrics later on when I dial the heating up. So it's quite handy to use a limiter when you're on uh, a lower ampage pitch like this one. And outside, I'm just hanging our waterproofs on the uh, hang points of the portico uh, door awning. Those waterproofs have worked hard today. They've earned their money today, they have. So the plan for later, in the fridge here. I've got some sausages there in the fridge. Gonna do some veg, potatoes and gravy. I'm definitely gonna have a Guinness or two. And then the dog can sleep through some more films. And I'm gonna enjoy some good Netflix on the TV. There's a new drama on tonight that I wanna watch. So I'm looking forward to that. And then we'll go and repeat and do the whole thing again tomorrow. Brilliant day. It's another fine morning in the base camp. Look at that a bed and the dog's like, ah, oh, you'll do these three, is it? So it's um, another misty morning. And like yesterday, this is uh, predicted to clear by late morning. So the plan for today is we're going bomber hunting up in the mountain next to the campsite, a World War II cross bomber. So we'll get some bacon butties on. We'll uh, relax this morning and we'll head up there at lunchtime. So the plan for today, we're going up to the to the crash site of the Wellington bomber. So um, 
we're going direct from the campsite so that's our pitch there that blue dot is the path is right by the entrance and it's a circular walk and the crash sites at the top there 1831 feet it's only a five mile of that so i might extend it and see what if we can get up on any of the higher peaks when we're up there see what it looks like and see how the dog's getting on we join the mountain path of Carach Goch near the entrance of the campsite. Quickly gaining altitude, the valley views open up with Van Gererich dominating the skyline. The Carboniferous limestones presenting landscapes similar to an extraterrestrial planet where man is yet to step his first foot. The rocks laid down over 300 million years ago during a period where global sea levels covered the lands we see today. The wreckage of the Wellington bomber lies to the east of Carach Goch summit. On the cold dark night of November the 20th, 1944, a Vickers Wellington bomber developed engine problems in the starboard engine. The aircraft lost altitude due to icing and crashed into Carrick Gork, killing all six aircrew on board. A sombering experience, making for moments of reflection as we enjoyed our lunch. Well, that is one exhausted Cocker Spaniel. So we just got back from our hike up to the Wellington Bomber. Incredible landscape, so barren, yet so beautiful. So I was pitching a tent out in front. So it's our last night and the plan for tonight is the same as always. But tonight, so what we're going to be having, I'm going to go for some chicken casserole and use the rest of the vegetables and then get Netflix back on, get a film on and then we'll be ready for an early dart in the morning. Another fantastic trip in the base camp. The Brecon Beacons is a truly wild place. 520 square miles of landscapes which are as diverse as they are captivating. We discovered broad open hillsides, wildly beautiful valleys and mountains, which have been attracting visitors for an eternity. Thank you for watching and I will see you on another base camping adventure sometime very soon. <laughs>